this is Cade McClure, right? Yeah. That hit this homer? No, no, no. No, I mean, he gave, gave up. up this homer, sorry, uh, against Tatis because Tatis is playing his rehab games right now. Or not his rehab games, his, what do you call it? Like yeah. my minor league games, so before I get back in there uh, from the suspension, he's not hurt. He's still got prime form on his celebration. He's rehabbing his he's rehabbing his uh, character flaws. <laughs> That's a nice <laughs> way to put it. All right, so so there was there was a tweet showing the homer, and then he Cade McClure, who gave up the homer, sent this tweet out. Star star cheater hits a home run on a rehab assignment during a steroid suspension. Wow! Well, then, wow shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, you didn't show the, the 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 tweet before that, Scotty. That said, "Hey, Cade McClure will never forget giving." You can always tell his grandkids he gave up a home run to Fernando Tatis, and then he fired back with a cheater gets hits a home run on me on a steroid suspension. Listen, Cade, good for you, man. Because people forget this stuff. We we kind of talked about this a little bit before, Eric. But man, listen, I don't understand why guys. If you're suspended for that long. You should have to start your rehab to get ready after the suspension. I've had this argument with the, the union before, and I don't understand. Why can he play in all these games? He's, he's suspended what, just because he's playing in AAA. That's the same thing. Like, Make these guys sit out their suspension, and then they have to come back and not be ready. It costs their team even more. And I understand they're going to say, well, you know, you can't control that or whatever. But, yeah, you can. Suspend them the full – whatever the suspension is, and then make them start the rehab assignment – because then people, that's just even more of an incentive to not be a cheater. I, I couldn't, I never even really thought about that. Like not letting them start the rehab, not giving them that advantage. I, I like that. I, I've, I've thought for years of things that are more long lasting than the 80 games. I mean, some guys come back from 80 games and they're like, I'm fresh. Like <laughs> I haven't played for 80 days, so I'm fresh. I know I hurt my you know, my pay scale because I didn't, you know, play for those days. I hurt my team. But my my biggest issue is not coming back or, or not, you know, the lack of apology, the lack of, of being like, hey, you know what? I made the mistake. Some guys have done it. And the guys that have said that, I feel like really show a lot of, a lot of fans, hey, you know what? I did make a mistake or, Hey, this was a bad, you know, this is a bad test. It's okay. Like if you really didn't do it, like come out and say, I really didn't do it. And there's a reason. And then the MLB needs to step in. There, there's so much, there's so much involved in this. And some people are going to say like, oh, okay, McClure, don't be so, you know, don't be so pissy because you gave up a home run. Like there is always that in the background. And if you make choices like this, in my opinion, Cade McClure can say exactly what he said, and he's not, he's not out of line at all. And I think, I think the biggest culprit in, in – not the biggest culprit because he was the one that did it – is the teams need to have some type of ramification because there's plenty of guys that, A.J., you've played with, that I've played against, that I've played with, that had this happen, came back – did well and still got a contract and the teams, the teams are never, you know, there's, there's no ramifications for the teams in, in any, in any situation because the players, you know, they're like, Oh, this is just a player problem. It's also a team thing too. Like there needs to be more accountability in this stuff. And I'm not talking about a lifetime ban because if you come out and you apologize, I am all about forgiveness. Like if you ask for forgiveness, to me, you should you should get it, no matter no matter what it is. But so many times it's like, oh, you know, he's served his time or whatever. Like, show some forgiveness, show something because he cheated. He cheated his teammates and he cheated the game that a lot of us work really hard to try to do well in. Here's the thing for me, Kratzy, and I agree with what you said. These guys, they get popped on what's Tatis on three hundred and something million dollar contract, whatever it is, two hundred something million, whatever crazy number it is. He misses 80 games. His, his deal is still going to give him 300 of that 360. Well, I forget the exact number, whatever the number is, but he's not losing that much by missing those 80 games. So he does the drugs and then he gets the rest of his contract. 
I, I mean, that's what, that's what, as a former player, that's what gets me. And I was, listen, I was in the middle of the steroid stuff. I came up when it was going on and I lived through the, the Mitchell report and I lived through the testing and all that stuff and, and how the game changed. But there's still people doing it, and we're still catching them. And you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to do it, I, and then still get the rest of your contract. I know they can't void contracts, and that'll cause a whole other issue. But there's got to be more of a of a, a a penalty for for what happens than just the 80 games, because you still get to keep your contract, you still get to do all the things. So some guys look at it like, man, if I lose 80 games, but yet I get a 300 million dollar contract, I lose five million. What's the big deal? I still get 295 of it. And that's what bothers me. I'll never forget we were in Toronto in 2015, and Johnny Gomes was on our team. We had a lefty that came in from the Marlins, and he was like, a, came in like the last two days. We had a guy named Brady Feigl who was going to make the team, and he, he didn't make the team because we brought in this lefty. I think his name was Andrew McCarahan or McCarahan or something like that. And he, he pitched, and we win a game in Toronto, and everyone's all excited. And we're like, uh, McCannerhan, whatever his name is, has to give us, has to talk to us. And we're like, what the heck is this about? And he's like, guys, uh, I just want you all to know I'm suspended for steroids. I, my arm was dead in spring training and I rubbed some cream on it. And that's what I got caught for. And Johnny Gomes looks at him and we're all standing around like, this is kind of weird. And Johnny Gomes looks at him and goes, well, okay, next. And everybody just turned around and walked away. He didn't apologize. He didn't say, I'm sorry. He just said, well, this happened because I had a dead arm and I rubbed some cream on it and I felt better. And Johnny Gomes had the perfect response. He's just like, okay, next. And everybody just turned and walked away. There was no like, we feel sorry for you. We feel bad for you because he wasn't sorry for it. He wasn't, there was no apology. Like you said, Kratz, there was no, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. It was, he's like, it was, he, he just said, I, I got caught for this and I don't know what I was thinking and I shouldn't have done it, but there was never like, I'm sorry guys. And then before Brady Feigl was a left-handed pitcher when I made our team, he goes down to AAA and in the second game blows his arm out. So instead of getting a full year on the big league DL, he's stuck down in AAA, not getting any service time. So there's there's all kinds of consequences to the to these actions, for sure. And and it's not it's it's not just a singular. It's not just Fernando Tatis. You know we're we're talking about him right now. There was the whole biogenesis thing where guys 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 got caught because of a paper trail. I talked to one of the guys that I played with that got caught on the paper trail. He said he took three or four tests. He didn't remember during that time and never got caught. And he was like, the amount of money I put out for what I could do to set up my family way outweighed on, on either side. You know, it was so, it was so easy. He said it was not, it wasn't even a tough decision for him. And on the, owners slash even some of the union you know i get it the union's supposed to be you know only pro player but i think we should be pro game because i think that grows everything but is like you caught one anti-aging clinic and all of a sudden we've eradicated steroids from the game like you didn't catch anybody you caught a paper trail and how many other anti-aging clinics are there in america and I feel like MLB is so much like reactive instead of proactive for this stuff that I've even sometimes been on the side of, eh, let everybody take everything. At least it's an evil, even playing field then. One more portion here, AJ. I mean, I don't know how deep you want to go into this. And I know you've talked about it before, but I mean, you were really in the thick of it and you dealt with it when, I mean, the the government basically had to step in and say, yo, you're going to create a massive issue. And, and this is where I try to explain it sometimes to friends, right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid thirties and all friends like, well, they should just let everyone do whatever they want and take <laughs> roids and bash homers. It'd be so entertaining. I'm like, yeah. And then every kid in the country would be doing the same thing to try to make it to the bigs and our country would be a mess from it. So uh, yeah, that government did start to step in because it's like it's a crime. So you were dealing with all that shit too as a player, as in seeing everything go around and the Mitchell report going on. Yeah, I was uh, listen. I was in the the heart of it. I mean, I can't, I remember coming up and I didn't know anything about steroids, and then I, I heard some guys talking about. It. I think the Arizona Fall League was the first time I ever heard guys talking about it, and then I, I I've seen guys do it. I've heard guys talking about it. You never know though, because some guys would say stuff and some guys, it was a lot of whispers. You never really knew. Then the Mitchell report hit. And, and I, I remember the thing was, they said, Oh, we can do testing 
and we'll test you and it'll be totally anonymous. Well, then all those names started leaking out. And I remember the White Sox, if you remember the White Sox in 04, we're like, we're all just going to not pee in a cup because we want us all to be positive and that'll guarantee you that there's testing. And, and MLB stepped in and said, we can't do that. It'll, it'll mess up the testing. And, and, and there was a lot of guys saying, well, they can't do that because it'll mess up, you know, whatever I'm doing. Or, and I'm, but it was just a weird time um, that it was unfortunate. But I wish there was a way to eradicate it and make the playing field even. And I'm not for everybody doing it, like you said, Scott, because that just causes more problems and, and it'll lead to worse things going on because then somebody will find something else and, and it'll just keep going and going and going. So it was just a weird time in baseball. I wish it was over, but it'll never go away because – the drugs are always ahead of the test. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I would never before like everybody just doing everything because of what you said, Scotty, like there's like, you're a role model. I think as a role model, you make decisions that other people look up to. I remember how, and what AJ was saying about being completely unaware, like you hear, you'd hear whispers about it. And if it's a big deal in the minor league, I mean, in the big leagues, the minor leagues, it was like, the Wild West, to the point where in 2000 and it would have been 2008, a player left our team and I got called up to AAA and he was like, hey, dude, he's like, I'm going over to, I'm going over, he went to go play in another country, went to go play in Korea or Japan. And he was an older player and he goes, I want you to have our apartment. And I was like, wow, I'm making $2,100 a month. He goes, I want you to have our apartment. I know you have a, I know you have a kid. Our son Braden was one at the time. And he's like, the team's paying, paying me back for the apartment. You owe me nothing. So I had a free apartment in AAA. Like this was awesome. So we get up at six in the morning. I move my son and my wife out of the hotel into this apartment. And I get, she takes me to the field. I get on the bus. I'm on the bus. My wife goes and gets groceries and starts packing them in the refrigerator. And she calls me and she goes, she's like, babe, there is syringes in our refrigerator. He, she's like, what should I do? I don't want to touch them. And I was like, well, I'll just throw them away when you get home. When I get home, like just put them somewhere where Braden can't reach into the, into the fridge and get them. And for me, this was six years into my career. I'd seen guys test positive. I'd seen guys, but this person was not somebody that I would have been like, oh yeah, you know, he's definitely on them. And then I talked to other guys and shows how naive I was. They were like, oh yeah, he would always take a cooler on the road with them. And, you know, he didn't have any snacks in the cooler. And this was 2008. So we were already, we were already, you know, quote, stricter testing. And this was, front and center to me. And I had no idea. I didn't see it at all. 